Internal parasitism in sheep and goats is one of the biggest health concerns for producers. Most goat and sheep breeders use a number of methods to control parasites, including anthelmintics or dewormers. But how do you accurately tell if the anthelmintic is doing its job? Body condition scoring and the FAMACHA test are common techniques, but performing a fecal egg count is more precise. A fecal egg count, or FEC, utilizes a microscope to estimate the amount of eggs in a known quantity of feces. This procedure is usually effective, easy to perform, and relatively affordable for all sizes of operations. The procedure explained in this video is a modified McMaster technique, which is the most common method. In order to perform a fecal egg count, there are a few required materials. Gloves, plastic bags, cooler, and ice packs are needed for fecal collection. Then two small cups, tongue depressors, or large popsicle sticks, disposable pipettes or a 1cc syringe, cheesecloth or a strainer in a graduated cylinder, McMaster slide, compound microscope, and a sugar or salt solution for the analysis. The basic idea of this procedure is to use specific gravity. The collected fecal material is mixed into a sugar or salt solution that has a higher specific gravity. This allows the eggs to float to the top of the slide, making them easily visible. Eggs within the feces are typically referred to as eggs per gram, or EPG. Therefore, this is a quantitative method. Now that we've got a clear understanding of how specific gravity allows us to quantify the number of eggs and the supplies to perform it, let's go through it step by step. There are a variety of ways to correctly conduct an FEC. Just remember, it is most important to conduct it the same way every time. This is the procedure adopted by our lab with some possible modifications explained. A crucial part of an FEC is the fecal collection itself. The fecal matter is best collected directly from the rectum. This allows the sample to be fresh and mostly free from foreign debris. The cleaner the sample, the easier it is to view the eggs under the scope. This can be done by selecting the animal you want to test and collecting the feces from the rectum using surgical gloves. This allows for higher accuracy on an individual level. You specifically know that the sample you collected came from a specific animal. If you simply pick feces off the ground, you cannot treat on the individual level. Individual treatment is becoming more and more important because internal parasites in sheep and goats are becoming more resistant to anthelmintics. Because of this, treating only animals that have a high parasite load is crucial to the future of your industry. FEC is a way to identify those animals with higher parasite loads for treatment. After the sample has been collected, place it in a labeled baggie. It is important to note that the feces should be kept in a cool environment. We recommend that during sample collection, the samples be placed in a cooler containing ice packs. Maintain a temperature below 50 degrees but above freezing. This will ensure that the eggs do not hatch. A FEC doesn't have to be performed immediately, but the fresher the better. If not done immediately, keep the cooler containing the samples in a refrigerator. Do not freeze the samples. There are several ratios of feces to solution that can be used, but the most important is that the volume of flotation solution and the weight of the feces are known numbers. A common ratio is 2 grams of feces to 28 milliliters of solution. Here we'll be using a sugar solution as the flotation medium. To make a stock solution, use one pound of sugar with 355 milliliters of water. The solution can be heated in a microwave until the sugar has completely dissolved into the water, or about 30 seconds to one minute depending on the strength of your microwave. The goal of this step is to have the sugar completely dissolved into the water, not to get it so hot that it becomes warm to the touch. Now weigh out 2 grams of feces and add it to 28 milliliters of solution in one of the cups. Break up the feces with a tongue dispressor. Once the mixture is completely homogenized, pour through a tea strainer or cheesecloth and allow all the solution to drain through. This step removes large pieces of debris, 
which can make reading the slide difficult. Either piece of equipment works well, as long as the feces has been properly broken up. Once the mixture is strained, stir the remaining solution with a back and forth motion eight times. It is very important to do it exactly eight times. The next step is to fill the 1cc syringe or disposable pipette. We prefer to use 1cc syringes because they are easy to clean and reuse, while the pipette can only be used once. Using a pipette can be more expensive because they must be replaced, while syringes can be disinfected and used again. Holding the McMaster slide at an uphill angle towards your body, quickly press the contents of the pipette into one of the chambers. Quick, steady flow will prevent air bubbles from forming. These can be mistaken for eggs or inhibit viewing. Repeat to fill the second chamber. Allow the prepared slides to sit for a couple minutes before proceeding. At this time, it will benefit you to have an Excel spreadsheet or chart to place the data of each sample in. This way, the data stays organized and you can make accurate recommendations for each individual in your herd. Now, place the slide onto the microscope and place the 10x objective over the slide. First, find any outlying corner of the slide. This will allow you to get an idea of where you are on the chamber. To avoid double counting, be sure to make a habit of how you read the slide. Either read the first column up to down and the next down to up, or vice versa. A helpful hint is to properly identify worm eggs, just the fine focus, until the air bubbles are extremely sharp. This will enable you to easily distinguish between air bubbles and worm eggs. Because treatments depend on the type of parasite infection, it is crucial that you understand the general classes. A parasite guide like the one shown can be very beneficial, however you can find many different sources of identification. We recommend training as the best method to master this counting technique. You will notice that the whole column will fit exactly in the view lens. So position your view to see the whole of one single column. When counting, only count the eggs within the bounds of the chamber and those on the lines. If it is hard to view the column lines, McMaster slides that have darkly colored lines can be purchased. Anything outside the lines are disregarded. Keep a pen and notepad handy. Record the number of eggs in each column for each chamber. Now repeat the counting procedure on the second chamber. Once you are finished with the McMaster slide, place it in water with soap to be cleaned. Let soak or gently run water through the slide. Throw away feces and wash all other reusable equipment. Now to determine the eggs per gram or the EPG of the sample used in the demonstrated procedure, you must add the total number of eggs from both chambers and then multiply it by 50. It is important to note that the factor of 50 is used when a 2 gram sample is analyzed. The factor is different when a different weight of feces is used. The EPG obtained can be used to determine the necessity of deworming individual animals or to give an idea of the level infection of the herd. Fecal egg counts are also necessary to perform a fecal egg count reduction test. A fecal egg count reduction test is used to evaluate the effectiveness of specific anthelmintics on internal parasites. This concludes our explanation of the McMaster fecal egg counting procedure. Hopefully this video has explained the benefits, procedure, and the math behind this effective management practice. If utilized properly, a healthier goat or sheep herd can be obtained. This presentation was a production of the Animal Science Department at Purdue University.